Hey guys, Jake Carlson here, host of the Modern Leadership Podcast. Are you ready to focus on amplifying your leadership superpowers? Let's go. Good morning, my friends and fellow elite achievers. Welcome to Modern Leadership, the podcast where each week we sit down with authors, entrepreneurs, and leaders to explore their journey, diving into the ups, their downs, and ultimately the lessons they learned along the way. Our goal, of course, is to show that everything is figure outable. Today's guest expert is Mark M. Brown. Mark is the author of Outward Bound. Lessons to Live a Life of Leadership, to Serve, to Strive, and Not to Yield. How did it all start? At age 25, Mark decided to attend a 23-day trip to an Outward Bound course in Utah. After this, he was asked to become an instructor, which began a 22-year working relationship with the organization. He has accrued over a 1,000 days in the wilderness as an instructor, and he currently lives in Waimea, Hawaii, and works as a master organizational guide, executive coach, and consultant, leading people and organizations through expeditionary leadership principles to transform culture. Boy, Mark, that's a mouthful. Welcome to Modern Leadership. How are you today? I'm doing great. It's wonderful to be here. You know, you're our first Outward Bound guest. In fact, you're the first person that I have talked to uh, that has this background and experience in Outward Bound. I grew up in Utah, so I'm familiar with the program. But for those listening that don't know, tell us about this journey that you started twenty five a number of years ago. Well, I was drawn to... Uh... Outward Bound, really from a um, recommendation of some friends. I started with a couple of different startups out of college. I, I worked actually as the editor of a regional business magazine in Southwest Florida, and then I helped start a public relations firm. And it's, um, I kind of chuckle, and at the ripe old age of 25, I was feeling a little burned out, I think a little bit lost because I really didn't have a sense of direction. And I, I jokingly said, boy, I feel like I'm 50 years old now that I've gotten to that point in time. I can tell you I had no idea what that was like. But at the time, I definitely felt um, a, a little confused about my um, my professional track. I, I had um, two different group, uh, groups of friends who, unconnected to each other, both kind of were a little concerned for uh, my my maybe midlife crisis at 25, but they um, they both individually um, had recommended that I do an Outward Bound course to maybe help me get my head clear. So I, um, as you mentioned, I took a trip to uh, the Colorado Outward Bound School in Utah and did a, uh, was called a multi-element course of, uh, was on top of a 13,000 foot plus mountain on the third day of the course, uh, spent a week in the desert and then a week on the Green River through Desolation and Great Canyons. And it really, um, it really, completely changed the trajectory of my life. And I think what I most discovered out there was this uh, incredible leadership style that came from the instructors. And at the time, I was really drawn to it, but I didn't really know and understand what, what, what it was that I was drawn to. And that led to this really lifetime of pursuing this uh, thing called, what I call expeditionary leadership, but really learning how to lead from these deep values and principles that come out of my, my relationship with Outward Bound. So set us up with a little bit of a foundation. What is Outward Bound and, and kind of what's the goal of sending you, you know, to the top of a mountain, to the desert, that kind of stuff? Absolutely. And it's, I think it's really very uh, prescient to what's happening right now in the world. Outward Bound actually was the creation of a German-born educator named Kurt Hahn. He started a uh, private school after World War I, actually, in Germany. And he was concerned about the rapid change that was happening to the culture as the country um, was transforming from an agrarian to industrialized society. And he created an educational system really to try to combat the, what he thought called the ills of society that were happening and really to try to educate the entire human being. Uh, after um, Hitler rose to power, um, Kurt Hahn openly challenged Hitler. He was thrown in prison. He had enough influential friends that got him out of prison. He immigrated to Great Britain, where he, he formed another school called Gordonston and went on to become the educator for people like Prince Philip, um, the royal family, and really became pretty prominent in, in Great Britain. When World War II started, he was asked to start a program to try to help the merchant marine sailors who were going out into their ships being sunk in the North Sea by the German U-boats. By the time they could get rescued, the younger men were perishing and the older men were surviving. So Outerbound literally was was created as something that was called a moral equivalent of war to give people enough of a sense of 
experience through adversity that they have the self-confidence and belief in themselves, the grit and determination to survive through any adversity. So that's where it came from. It came to came to the United States in the early 1960s and then really has spread all over the world. So you're at this course. You're a young person going through this quarter-life crisis at the time, 25 years old. But something happened that basically said, you know what, I'm going to make this a, for the next 22 years, I'm going to focus on learning these principles to the point that today you've got a book written about these principles. What happened during your experience that really was the light bulb for you that said, I've got to make this a life pursuit? Well, I think there's some, one is discovering really the the alignment of values that happened for me with the organization itself. So really the you know, if, if I've used I've used a lot of theory in my career since my Outward Bound days, but I think if you look at uh, a well-known um, theory called self-determination theory, that first big big key to having people who are intrinsic intrinsically motivated and driven is a deep sense of purpose. And Outward Bound Outward Bound is extremely purposeful. It it draws people who really are looking to make a difference in people's lives. the The start of that is is through the the mastery of um, both your using your body physically, so that whole fitness piece is huge, but also the mastery of all the skills, both interpersonal and technical, that need to happen. And it's really kind of a remarkable thing to have a chance to do something enough times that you become really, really proficient um, at it, whether it's uh, something like paddling a canoe or backpacking or rock climbing, whatever it may be, but at, but at the same time, I'm doing it within a sense of community. And I think I never really had any idea what it was like to to uh, really dive deep into human development or to be a catalyst for other people's growth. And once once I started to be a part of that, I was really hooked on it. And, and Outward Bound has, has a great mentorship model. So I, I got to work underneath really amazingly talented people who supported me in my own training and development. And then for many years, I got to play that role as well. So I, I did a lot of intern training for new people. And I, I became one of those instructors that, that often took people out for the first time as assistant instructors. So really developing people on this um, process of both helping people master the skills at Outward Bound, you, you learn the skills not to become a great rock climber or a mountaineer or a paddler, but because of what that what that teaches you about yourself and what it teaches you about doing that in community. Uh, rock climbing is a great example of put someone on a rope. Most people are afraid of heights. That's a very natural fear. Most people have never rock climbed. So Outward Bound um, puts people on a climb. It's a, it's a very, very safe experience, actually. The safety systems are all double backed up and redundant. So the, the worst that could really happen to you on a rock climbing experience is you might scratch your knees or scrape a, uh, your knuckles or something, but you really, you can't get hurt. And yet it, here you are 30 feet in the air and you get to a hard spot where you don't know where to put your hand and feet. And that, that natural fear comes forward. And that becomes a incredible place to really learn about yourself and about what you want to do in your life. One of the people that I interviewed, my book was a series of interviews from people who had experienced that were bound either as leaders like me or participants. But one of those was a woman named Rue Mapp, who talked about um, on her hour bound course, actually climbing and, and she had not brought a headlamp with her and she was, it was getting dark and she couldn't see. And the instructor had kind of told her, just trust your feet, Rue, trust your feet. And that experience of getting through by trusting your feet became the mantra for her entire life. But it's actually the theme she's used to launch her um, business, which is a, you know, a national nonprofit, which which takes thousands of African Americans out into the wilderness every year. So, and she actually was just, I just saw a video she posted hiking with Oprah Winfrey. So she's kind of become as big as you can get out there in the world. And, and she, she tells this great story of, you know, that lesson she had of trust, trusting her feet and how it changed the trajectory of your life. So those are the things quite honestly, as a, as a young person, young adult discovering that I, I could be, um, a part of people finding the magic in their lives like that. It really, it, it hooked me and it's a, in a really good way, an intoxicating experience to share people's experiences that as they face extreme challenge and then overcome it. 
And I think this is a good transition to what we want to talk about during this episode, which really is this book, which is a series of interviews where you sat down, you talked to people who have had these experiences and the lessons they learned. You just shared one with us, and I happen to be a rock climber. My wife and I actually had our first date hanging off the rock wall and enjoying uh, being out there, and so I can understand what you're saying, but share with us another story from this book, an experience that one of these mentors or people that you worked with throughout your career really grew through this ex- expeditionary leadership learning? Well, it was really, it was an incredible journey to write the book and to get to talk with uh, a lot of these um, leaders. And there was a really wide range, right? So, you know, at one end was a, a young woman who was in her freshman year of college when I talked to her and it was 16 when she started a nonprofit. And on the other end are people like Arthur Blank, who was the founder of the Home Depot. And and I was really, I, when I moved to, I moved to Asheville, North Carolina in the mid 1990s and was, was mostly doing professional development work through Outward Bound. So leadership development, team building work. I started, I started um, um, training and working as a coach back then. So I'm kind of a grand, grandpa in the coaching industry, actually. But um, I had a chance to go out on wilderness experiences people and then work with them internally as a coach as well. And, and Arthur Blank got involved with home with um, Outward Bound actually very early on with the, when he had started the Home Depot. And it was such a powerful experience for him that, that in the nineties, when he was still a part of the Home Depot, he's um, obviously since left then quite a while ago, but he, he made sure that every manager had an Outward Bound experience. And he talked a lot about, um, what he focused on when he was creating the company and growing it so fast was empowering those um, store managers, district managers to, one, feel the ownership of the store experience themselves, but two, to really have passion for caring about the people that, um, that in their communities. And that was the way he ran the company. He, he I, I feel like he still d- does that now, actually. He, he I saw he just pledged several million dollars to help with the coronavirus um, recovery in the Atlanta area. And he's also pledged millions of dollars to work with impoverished um, youth in the Atlanta area as well. And he's teaching them entrepreneurial skills so they can lift their communities out of poverty. And that comes from, you know, there's a outward bound, the, the motto is to serve, to strive and not to yield. And Arthur, when I talk with him, uh, he talked a lot about how that motto and the values behind it had impacted him so much as a younger man that he felt this obligation to give back to the community, to be in service to a greater good. And that, that I think, is one of the stories that I think really reflects well the education that Outward Bound brings to Well, let's break down that mantra from Outward Bound, which is actually in the subtitle to your book, right? Lessons to live a life of leadership, to serve, to strive, and not to yield. Let's talk about what that means and what you're communicating through your book in the areas of service and striving and not yielding, not giving up. Well, I I think that um, we we actually structured the book in the the sections of to serve, to strive, and not to yield. And so when we look at service, I think it looks first at um, serving that higher purpose, recognizing that if you are starting a company or a nonprofit, it doesn't really matter. Any organization, when it has a higher call, it it is um, it's a compelling thing for people. And these are same, the same principles you'll see in organizations like um, Conscious Capitalism that I um, subsequently got involved with years later. But they talk about um, when you create a sense of purpose, same thing with um, with self determination theory. People show up who share that sense of purpose, and so um, creating that that um, that service orientation really intrinsically drives people. People are drawn to want to give more, and it also um, it's an understanding that any organization serves some type of a mission that that you know I believe you know I'm, I believe strongly in capitalism. And I also see that capitalism with a cause is incredibly powerful. So companies that have set their intention around doing more than just making money tend to have a gigantic impact in the world. And they're incredibly financially successful as well. And we're seeing more and more of that when we look at some of these companies that, you know, a number of years ago seemed novel, like Tom's Shoes giving a pair of shoes to, you know, for every pair bought, they give a pair to those in need. Uh, 
uh, Warby Parker glasses, you know, giving to those in need. And I think at the time, those sounded like really ingenious ideas. But now we fast forward to today and we look at it and we say, there really is a lot of power, a lot of business sense in giving back and being a part of the community in serving. And so that's the first section of the book to serve. How about striving? Where do we go with striving in your book? And, and I actually think, again, the, this section of the book fits really well to the to the situation that many organizations probably find themselves in right now. And it's that when, um, when I wrote this book, I, I had been working, um, I, I had an opportunity to go in and do a huge organizational change within a company. I got invited in at a leadership level. And one of the things I saw during my time there was the incredible disruption that was happening, happening through this digitized um, revolution and all of the machine learning that was happening was really it's put it's put pressure on every organization before we had this you know worldwide pandemic crisis we already had organizations under extreme stress and so part of that striving is to be able to know that you can lead through uncertainty when you when you take a group out on an outward bound course you you learn about who they are from the paperwork that they send in you create a course plan which is a a a hope <laughs> of where you'll be and what you'll do. Some things may be fixed in stone, like you have to show up at a certain rock climbing site on a certain day. But other than that, you're really out with that group of people and you you respond in the moment to what happens. So you may, you know, you may get wind down on a lake, the wind's blowing so hard you can't paddle. So you may have decided in your course plan, they have said, oh, we're gonna camp at this lake, but you may not get there. And so what happens to a group when they find themselves you know, with the wind blowing so hard that they get out on a lake and they go backwards or what happens when, you know, a thunderstorm happens or um, somebody gets hurt or sick, all those things, the uncertainty of the experience um, that happens is really when the teaching happens. So as an outward bound instructor, we, we talk about them as teachable moments. And, and it's the, as a leader being present to the people um, that you're leading, paying attention to those subtle moments of when the doubts come in, the story I talked about with Rue Map of that moment, that moment was captured by a really gifted instructor who, you know, experienced her threat and fear on the rock. And at that moment gave her that tidbit of the trust your feet. And that's, that's the, um, the lessons that come through striving, which is facing that uncertainty and having the, the leader present enough to recognize when the moment is there that they can teach. I, I think also, one of the deepest skills that happens in this area is deep curiosity. And that also helps you recognize, you know, as an outward, as an, on an outward bound course, an outward bound instructor's job is to, to not be needed anymore. So to, to do that, you have to become incredibly curious about the people. You have to dig in and get to know them well enough that you can help them learn and empower them so that they don't need you anymore. Uh, one of the, one of the, people I got to talk with who um, shared that kind of story of how he applied that in his life was a former United States Senator, Mark Udall. And he talked about his intense curiosity that he developed as an outward bound instructor and how he was able to put that in service of his constituents when he was elected and really to strive through that adversity of being in Washington and the battles of uh, political power, a lot of it came from um, even getting curious about his political opponents and taking the time to ask enough questions to listen so that he could find common ground. All of that, I think, fits into that striving. And when you're an instructor out on the Outward Bound course, do you have time to sit down with the group and kind of debrief what was learned, the experience that they're having? Do you guys sit around the fire at night and, and talk about it or after the course is done, kind of reflect back, have time as a, as a group to reflect back on what was learned, the experiences that were had, and how those apply maybe to uh, experiences that they're going to have in the workforce or in their businesses? So it's very much structured that way. And particularly if you do a, a leadership program, um, I did a lot of corporate program, leadership programs throughout we bound. So typically your day starts with a briefing together. So there's a tone set and frame for the day. What are we focused on? What, where are we going? What do we need to learn? Um, there's a briefing of the leaders, whoever's going to, you know, if it's, if it's a deliberate, sometimes our bound instructors will deliberately ask people to lead for a day to ex have that experience of being leaders. Sometimes it happens more ad hoc. So um, depending on how it's structured, the 
the frame will happen for the day about things like route and food and water and safety and all those things. So that's all framed. And then during the day of traveling, always you're watching and waiting for those moments and you want to try to capture those learning moments when they happen. So you, you may end up actually um, pulling a group together and having conversation right in the middle of a travel day if there's important learning. And that always takes precedent over simply getting from A to B. A to B is not the intention, but what happens while you're going A to B is the intention. And then typically um, when a group gets into camp, they will take care of the chores of getting camp set up, getting food going, whatever needs to get done, gathering firewood, if they're building fire, whatever, whatever it may be, depending on the course area that they're in. And then there's, there is a typically a formal circle that evening where the day is debriefed, learning is gleaned from it, um, generally, as an outbound instructor, you're trying to facilitate that learning. You're not lecturing to the learning. So you're, you're really asking people the questions. What happened? What are the experience? What, um, we, we use a common just plus delta tool. What went well today? What would you change tomorrow? If there is a leader of the day rotation, let's give the feedback to these leaders today. How did they do? What did they do that worked well? What would you tell the leaders tomorrow to do better from perhaps mistakes that they made. So it's a chance to continue that process of learning. And typically also at some point in that trip, the group faces some, some extreme adversity. It may be the route being incredibly difficult. It may be whether it may be for some people, the honesty of, you know, you're with a group of people 24 seven. So imagine, imagine if you're a, um, there with an intact business team and usually people you see eight to five and you go home. Right. But now you're, you're you're living with them 24 7 and and what happens when people have self-doubt or they reach their breaking point and they're around their peers is that a is that an acceptable um space within the organization that now we're bound instructor's job is to make sure that that's a safe experience so people can actually face that adversity and know that you know maybe it's okay to ask my peer for help maybe that makes the team stronger and that's what we try to teach And I think this is a great point for our listeners that they may want to sit down, get out a pen and paper and rewind this last little section here, because even though you were talking, Mark, about outward bound and some of the experiences actually being outdoors, there's some actual real life practical lessons that we can learn and take into our businesses as leaders, Uh, always looking for teachable moments taking time to debrief, starting the day with an agenda or starting the day with kind of a focus of, of what you're doing. These are all things that, sure, you're out on the course and you're out in, in nature and having this expedition and you're enjoying and maybe going through some hardships. But when you come back and you p- apply this to your business, the things that you're doing as a team, you realize that a lot of this pulling together, a lot of this overcoming is very similar. It just may look different, but the lessons that you pulled out of it are so important. And that's where the book comes from, right? So now we go to number three, and that is how not to yield. And this is so vitally important. I think today, more than ever before, is not giving in. So tell us a little bit about not to yield and maybe pull out a story from the book that you could share with us. Of course. And what what I really look at when I talk about not not yielding is is resilience, which is is one of those qualities. And when I was when I was um, still on a le- leadership team and organization, it was actually one of the behaviors that I looked for in interviews that I did with people when I was hiring. And I think it's one of the critical um, characteristics that and and empathy and compassion I think are really the the most critical um, components to, for having a really strong team member inside your organization. So. Resilience is really that ability to face that adversity and find a way through it, um, not giving in to fear or self-doubt, knowing, uh, and that doesn't mean that you don't feel it, but it's more learning how do I process this to a point that allows me to um, find the workarounds, you know, ultimately doing the right thing at the right time, ultimately knowing and understanding that this is hard but hard doesn't mean that I have to quit. Um, I, I have fear and doubt, but fear and doubt doesn't have to stop me. As, a, as an executive coach for the last few years, it's one of the things that I 
work heavily on with people to understand. I, I used to use um, I used to use the metaphor since I spent some time in the Southwest of um, a lot of people that have been out on open range land know what a cattle grate is, right? So it's this the, this thing they stick in the road with with metal bars in it, and you know, I guess the, I guess a cow walks up and says, "Ooh, if I try to walk across that, my feet." You know, my hose will slip down in between. I'll bring, break my legs, so I'm not going to walk across that. Well, in some places where I've been, they just painted stripes on the road to make it look like a cattle guard. And so the cow just sees it and just assumes there's a cattle guard there and won't cross the road. And we would talk a little bit about, is this a real cattle guard or not? Are these risks real? What are the real risks and what are the perceived risks? Rock climbing gives you a great example to experience that, that particularly the way Outward Bound does it, because... You may have the fear, but is the risk really there? And then what do you want to do with that fear? I think the last piece of um, that comes along with not yielding also is not yielding to the easy way, whether it's in society, whether it's in... Our families, in our businesses. Yeah, values. I think that sometimes it's easy to say, you know, everyone's going this direction, so why shouldn't I go this direction too? I, I talked about... The former United States Senator Mark Udall. One of the stories he told me was was after uh, he was uh, he was in Congress after nine eleven, and when the Congress had to vote on war powers, um, he was not in support of the United States going to war in Iraq. And he talked about how he I, I think he was on intelligence committee, but he he looked at all the information and and. He had a lot of pressure to support the president and go to war in Iraq, and yet his value system told him that was not the right thing for the country to do. So he he took what could have been a really incredibly unpopular vote. And I'm not getting into the politics at all when I tell the story. It's simply an example of someone who said, stood in their truth and said, you know, even if this costs me re-election, I believe this is the right thing to do, so I have to stand in that truth. And that that's a great example to me of I think what Outward Bound teaches in that sense of, you know, their, their intention of the creation of Outward Bound was to create citizens who, who would stay responsible to their values, even when, even if the headwinds with, from society were intensely pushing against that. And Mark's story was a good example. And it's a great story. And I think that every business leader listening right now can think in their lives and in their day experiences that they have where they have to stand up for what they believe, that they have to do, maybe go against the grain a little bit and really be strong in their values because there's so many opportunities to cut corners and and shirk duty. And so I think that's a great story. Mark, alas, we're at the point in our podcast now where we need to shift gears slightly. We're going to tell our listeners to go pick up a copy of the book to catch more of those stories that you gathered together from Outward Bound. But now we're going to go to our section called Learning from Leaders. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. Let's do it. All right. Our first question then, is the book currently on your Kindle or bedside table? What are you reading today? I have two, and I, I because one is a, one is a um, workbook and one is a... I guess a, a memoir. So the memoir is called *The Adventurer's Son*, and it's a it's a, a memoir from a mountaineer from Alaska who actually he, um, his son disappeared in the jungles of Costa Rica, and it's the story of him really exploring his own life through his search to find his son. And the workbook I have is um, right now is a book that's called *Win Every Day* by Mark Miller, and um, my my publishers. Um, Bear Kohler, and I'm part of an author's collective group there. So I get the opportunity to read other authors' books and do a little critiquing. So this is the one that I'm reading right now called Win Every Day. We love Mark on the podcast, so that's uh, great. All right, our next question for you is your leadership superpower. Well, I would have to say it's deep listening. And so why is deep listening so important? For me, it's being fully present to the person that I'm um, working with, whether it's a coaching client or when I was a leader. And I think deep listening lets you really, um, one, connect and have that person know that you um, you understand who they are and what they're trying to do. So for me, it's the number one skill that I've tried to foster in my life. And the thing I think has taken me the furthest. Well, and I love that you called it a skill because that means to me that it can be learned, that if we're not great at listening, if we just listen and we don't deep listen, we can get better at it as we practice, as we put our intention towards it. Our next question then is the book that you most often gift or refer to friends, family, and colleagues. 
the thing I think that I've been most drawn to is the I, I most often give a book that's um, just called um, Conscious Capitalism. I think it's because it speaks to the values that um, capitalism can bring in the world. I think sometimes we get into this, you know, either either we have to just focus on profit or capitalism is bad. And I feel like Conscious Capitalism really, to me, captured um, when I when I stumbled onto that um, organization, you know, a, a decade ago or so, I was just so struck by how they spoke to what I always believed, which is, you know, organizations really are the heart of what, what leads change in the world. And I think they capture a really good blueprint of how to how to build an organization that can be successful and profitable, but also stand for something beyond just the money. Very cool. And I love that description that you just gave. And I'm a believer in conscious capitalism as well. Our final question then is a quote, philosophy or mantra that you live by. Well, when I worked for Outward Bound, um, most Outward Bound courses end their time with a, a personal challenge event of some kind. Um, I lived and worked for several summers in the Northwoods of northern Minnesota. And the final event we did was a, it was a kind of a triathlon. It was a um, six mile canoe paddle followed by one mile portage of the boat and then a five mile run back into the base camp. And when you turn the final road into the base camp on the trees coming in was a saying that was written by the Minnesota Outward Bound founder, Bob Pay, And it said to be tough yet gentle, humble, but bold, swayed always by beauty and truth. And that's the values that I try to live my life by. Yeah, that's an amazing life philosophy. And I can't imagine that as you try to follow that and, and instill that in your life, I can't imagine that success is beyond your reach. I mean, this is just what the foundation of reaching that successful height that you're trying to reach is built on. And so thank you for sharing that. Now, Mark, before we let you go today, tell us, how can we learn more about you? How can we connect with you? How can we get a copy of Outward Bound Lessons to Live a Life of Leadership? You can buy Outward Bound Lessons to Life a Leader, Live a Life of Leadership at any um, any of your booksellers. So independent um, booksellers online sell it as well as Amazon.com, um, BarnesandNoble.com as well. So any, any major bookseller, you can pick it up and you can get a Kindle version or the CD version if you um, would rather listen than read. And um, if you want to learn more about the work that I'm doing, my website is markmbrown.com. And there's a whole section there with tools for expeditionary leadership, which is how to apply these lessons I've learned into an organizational setting. And there's also a couple other communities that I'm fostering right now. So you can learn all about that at markmbrown.com. Well, very cool, Mark. We're going to link all of that up on the show notes for this episode. So they'll have one place that they can stop and get all of that goodness. I want to thank you for taking a little bit of time out of your day, sharing your wisdom, your background, your experiences, and the stories of Outward Bound with us. Thank you for being this week's Modern Leadership Guest Expert. Well, it was my pleasure. I appreciate you having me on. All right, my friends, and a big thanks to Mark for coming on the show. And uh, I got to tell you, I, I, I'm intrigued. I love this idea. I grew up in the Boy Scouts. I grew up going out into nature, hanging off of walls, canoeing, running, doing all that stuff uh, that the scouting program does. But now that I'm older, I don't know that I'm doing enough of it to really build my leadership experience, expeditionary leadership experience. I love this idea. I Thanks for Mark for coming on, talking about Outward Bound, talking about his new book. And as you dive into this book, you're going to see stories of names you recognize. We talked about the Senator. We talked about the guy who started the Home Depot. We talked about Kohler. These are all people that have had experiences out in nature that they've brought back to the boardroom, that they've brought back to their businesses. And you can do the same I love this concept. Of course, everything that we talked about on this episode can be found at jakeacarlson.com slash ML183, episode 183. We'll get you all the information about Mark and Outward Bound. And until next week, I want to wish you the very best of days, an even better life. And remember, everything is figure outable. Thanks for listening to the Modern Leadership Podcast. 
You can find me on Facebook at Speaker Jake, on Twitter at Jake A. Carlson, and of course the website, jakeacarlson.com. See you there. Bye.